Today on the Audio Hotline, I'm going to be reviewing this $100 condenser microphone. This is a microphone from SE. This is the X1A. And yeah, this joke is probably played out a little bit, but I have to. I have to say it. In case you didn't notice, this is the Sex1A. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm immature, but it's a good name. It's a good name. Come on. But today with the SEX1A, I'll be taking you through the basics, the features, the specs. We'll test the hell out of it. We'll do a blind comparison that includes all of these microphones that are, you know, in a similar price category. Some might be a little bit more, some might be a little bit less. But the comparison later will, of course, be a blind comparison so you can just use your ear holes and not your eye holes. But a couple things I should let you know before we start going through some basics. This microphone does not come with a pop filter or windscreen. It doesn't mean you shouldn't use one with it. Currently, I'm not using one, but I will also bring one in here in a little bit. Also, right now, I am using just a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, really common audio interface, and I've got my gain set at about 45%. And I'm currently just using a warm audio XLR cable. But now let's go ahead and talk about what comes with this $100 SEX1A if you decide to purchase it. The SEX1A comes in a box that looks pretty similar to your Shure style microphones. Inside the box you will find two stickers, so awesome. You'll find some documentation. You'll find a microphone clip, but no shock mount. Inside that mic clip, there is a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. And of course, this will include the microphone itself, the SEX1A. There aren't a whole lot of things included in this box, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Sure, when you get a microphone or a product and it comes with a lot of accessories and everything, you're like, awesome, I got what I paid for. But with a lot of microphones, you may sacrifice a little bit of accessories for a higher quality microphone, which in my opinion is worth it. And hopefully that's the case here, but I'm just saying it's not always bad that it doesn't include a lot of stuff. All I know is that little red SE sticker is definitely going on my laptop. But the quality of the microphone and the products that come with the SE X1A do seem really solid. This isn't necessarily like the best built microphone or the best mic clip, but for $100, they seem like they will definitely get the job done. I will say the grill has a little bit more give than I usually like, but I haven't noticed any denting when I've been pressing on it or anything, so that's a good thing. The body of the microphone itself actually feels really good, but as far as the look of the microphone, I think it's Sex A. Sex 1A. If they got rid of the one, it was just Sex A. That'd be so cool, man. But now that we've talked about what comes with this microphone, now let's go ahead and talk about what comes on the microphone. Let's go ahead and talk about the features. On the SEX1A, you will find a low cut filter, also known as a high pass filter. This low cut filter cuts off at 100 hertz and drops six decibels per octave. And on this microphone, there is a switch to engage a negative 20 decibel attenuation pad. The SEX1A is also an XLR microphone. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of most built-in high-pass filters or low-cut filters, I still do think in certain occasions it is nice to have. I usually just find myself doing it in post and getting a better result. Some built-in low-cut filters can just be a little too aggressive. Also, I do love the fact that this has a negative 20 decibel pad. I think that's always a handy thing to have around in case you need to record something pretty loud. I actually do like the switches and the way they function. They do seem like they might be a little too easy to accidentally press. And I would like if the switch area was a little bit bigger, if that makes sense. And for there to be like a little line that shows me exactly what setting I'm in because I could see me accidentally hitting the high pass filter and having that engaged and not meaning to, and not really being able to see a difference on the microphone as to whether it's in that setting or not. It's definitely not a super big deal. It's something you should check every time you pull your microphone out anyway, but it would be nice if it was a little bit more clear and had a better indication. Now that we've talked about what comes with this microphone and we went through the features, now let's go ahead and nerd out and talk about some specs. The SEX1A has a two-thirds inch permanently biased condenser capsule. This is a cardioid microphone with a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This has an impedance of less than 50 ohms and a sensitivity of 20 millivolts per pascal. A max SPL of 130 decibels, unless the negative 20 decibel pad is engaged, then it becomes 150 decibels. This has a signal to noise ratio of 78 dBA, an equivalent noise level of 16 dBA, a dynamic range of 114, unless the negative 20 decibel pad is engaged, then it's 134 decibels. And this microphone does in fact require 48 volts of phantom power. 
Now I will just briefly put the frequency response graph up on the screen and the polar pattern graph so you can just check that out really quick. You can give this video a real quick pause if you want to examine it even further. After looking at the specs, I do feel like this microphone is very adequate for its price range. It living at about the 16 dBA noise floor level makes sense considering the AT2020, I believe is around 20 decibels. And a lot of other $100 microphones or close to $100 microphones are pretty similar in that right. But now that we've talked about what comes with this microphone, on this microphone, and in this microphone, now let's go ahead and start testing this microphone out. As you can see, I do have a pop filter up now and I will be using this during some of the testing. I'll of course do a majority of tests with it and without it. But if you get really close to this microphone and test the proximity effect, here's how it's going to sound. Now here's a proximity effect test with a pop filter in place. And now if I engage that low cut filter that drops off six decibels per octave at 100 hertz, here's how that sounds when I'm close to it. Another proximity effect test with the low cut filter on and a pop filter in place. Just so you know, this next part is going to be loud. Microphones like these usually don't take plosives too well, and we're about to do a plosive test. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. With the low cut on, Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. Behind the microphone right now, I have a very loud keyboard and I'm just typing on it. These are some Cherry MX Blues and they're uh, super loud and here's how it rejects that. Now here's just a test with a normal Apple keyboard and here's how it rejects that keyboard directly behind the microphone. Now we're gonna take the polar pattern test one step further with a white noise test. You know what time it is. Kitty purr test time. Blue, get in here. Currently, I'm about three inches away from the microphone. Now I'm about six inches away from the microphone. Now this is about a foot away from the microphone. Now I'm about two feet away from the microphone. Now I'm about three feet away from the microphone. Now here's just a real quick spoken word test. This is in flat mode. And now I'm the same distance away from the microphone, but this is with the low cut filter on. Now it's a little bit of a silly test, but we'll test the negative 20 decibel pad. Right now this is flat mode on the microphone. Now this is the negative 20 decibel pad engaged. Now if I bring the audio up 20 decibels in post, it should sound the same as this, which is back in flat mode on the microphone at zero decibels. Now if you're going to be doing a podcast or voiceover work or anything like that, here is just a real quick post processing test. The only EQ I have on it is a high pass filter that I did in post. It's not the one that's on the microphone, but we'll try that in a second. Now this is the exact same post processing with a compressor, or a limiter, maybe a de-esser, but this is with the pop filter in place. Now I've taken the high pass filter off in my post processing chain, and now I actually just have the low cut filter on with the microphone, but with the same processing with the compressor and everything. Now once again, same post processing, but with the microphone having the low cut filter engaged. Now we're going to do a couple guitar tests. Now here's a real quick singing test. 
Well, now that we've gotten all that testing out of the way, now we're ready to get into the blind comparison. First thing I'm going to do, just so you don't immediately recognize this microphone in the comparison, if it's at the beginning or toward the beginning, is that I'm going to have a palate cleanser microphone that's not in the comparison, but it's in between this section and the comparison, just to, you know, freshen up your ears a little bit, give it a different sound up in there. But now we're ready for that palate cleanser microphone to kick it off. You take it over, palate cleanse. Now here is just a real quick palate cleanser microphone. This is the 512 Audio Skylight. Usually in these comparisons, I come up with a silly little clever name for each of the microphones. But with this one, I'm going to try to include a lot of different microphones. So I'm gonna skip that and try to get through it as fast as possible so you guys aren't listening to a comparison for 30 minutes. But now that your palate is hella hella cleansed, Let's go ahead and start this comparison. Here is the first microphone test for microphone A. This is the first microphone test for microphone B. This is the first microphone test for microphone C. This is the first mic test for microphone D. This is the first mic test for microphone E. This is the first mic test for microphone F. This is the first mic test for microphone G. This is the first mic test for microphone H. This is the first test for microphone I. Here is microphone A again, and here is how mic A sounds. Here is microphone C again, and here is how mic C sounds. Here is microphone E again, and here is how mic E sounds. Here is microphone G again, and here is how mic G sounds. Here is microphone I again, and here is how mic I sounds. Here is microphone B again, and here is how mic B sounds. Here is microphone D again, and here is how mic D sounds. Here is microphone F again, and here is how mic F sounds. Here is microphone H again, and here is how mic H sounds. Once again, we have microphone A in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone D in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone G in this blind comparison. Once again, here is microphone B in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone E in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone H in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone C in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone F in this blind comparison. Once again, we have microphone I in this blind comparison. Comparison. One final time, here is the sound of microphone D. One final time, here is the sound of microphone H. One final time, here is the sound of microphone B. One final time, here is the sound of microphone F. One final time, here is the sound of microphone A. One final time, here is the sound of microphone E. One final time, here is the sound of microphone I. One final time, here is the sound of microphone C. One last time, here is the sound of microphone G. Just in case you're getting sick of hearing the same phrases over and over again, here's another one featuring microphone A. All right, are you guys ready for the big sex 1A blind comparison reveal that sounded dirty? But now let's go ahead and get into those results. Microphone A was the Worker B2. Microphone B was the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. Microphone C was the MXL770. Microphone D was the Audio-Technica AT2020. Microphone E was the microphone this whole comparison has been about. It is the SEX1A. Microphone F was the MXL990. Microphone G was the Tenoy TM1 also known as the Behringer TM1. They're the same mic. Mic H was the most expensive microphone in this comparison. It is the Rode NT1. Microphone I was the MXL2006. Well, now that we've went through the basics, what comes with this microphone, the specs, the features, we tested it out. We did a blind comparison. We did all the stuff, all of the things. Now I'm going to take a real quick break. By quick break, I mean a few days. I'm going to go through and edit this first section of the video, listen to this microphone an absolute ton, listen to the comparison a bunch. Then I'm going to come back here in different closey clothes and give you my opinion of the SEX1A. So I'll see you here in a second. It'll be a second for you, not for me. 
And we're back. But now that I've listened to this microphone a ton in a bunch of different ways, I'm ready to give you my opinion of the SE X1A. First, I do just wanna say that I am yet to try an SE microphone that I really didn't like. In fact, I've actually never tried an SE mic that I didn't like quite a bit. But I will say this is my least favorite SE microphone that I have tried. Now don't jump to conclusions, I'm not saying it's a terrible microphone or anything, but there are a few things about it that I'm just not the biggest fan of. But let me just briefly take you through a couple good things and a couple bad things about the Sex 1A. As far as good stuff goes, the body of this microphone is built really well. It is nice that it has some options on the microphone, even though I may not use them all the time. I know that they're there and that if I need them, I can use them and that's a nice thing. So the negative 20 decibel pad and the low cut filter, I think is a pro. I've actually really grown to like this little mic clip. At first I wasn't positive I was gonna like it because it looks a little bit more like your dynamic microphone mic clip, more so like a small diaphragm condenser microphone because it is pretty small. And most condenser microphones usually come with a little mic mount that goes around the whole bottom section, you kind of screw it in, or they come with a shock mount. I would've absolutely preferred a shock mount, but considering this is $100, the mic clip's fine. I actually ended up liking it a little bit more than having to screw the microphone in just because getting it on and off the microphone stand was a little bit easier. And speaking of this being $100, I think that that's a very appealing price to a lot of people. So I can't really fault the price of this microphone and everything you get with it. But now I kinda do wanna move on to some cons. Comparing this microphone to other $100 microphones, I can't say it's necessarily worse in a lot of ways, but I can just say that I prefer some of the other microphones over this one. And I'm definitely not saying those other $100 microphones are perfect. Maybe you absolutely love the hyped high-end sound of this microphone. I can't fault you for that. If that's what you like, cool. But for me and my voice, I just found that this can be a little bit harsh and pretty sibilant. With a little bit of EQ, I could definitely correct some of the things that I'm not crazy about with it. But I will say in the rest of the frequency range, this microphone does do a better job than some of the other microphones in the comparison. And like I always say and always will say, you have your own preferences, you have what you like. And that's a big part of what makes audio so fun is that everyone does have their own preference. And it also makes it possible for a microphone like this with a hyped high end to come out and be successful and a microphone with a less hyped high end that's a little bit darker sounding to also come out and be successful. But that's why I do the comparison. That's why I did a gigantic one this time is because I had a decent amount of hundred-ish dollar microphones available to me. So I wanted to throw in as many as I could. And I did want to throw in something that was a little bit more expensive like the NT1 to show you guys like, hey, if you do want to save a little bit more money, here's what you're getting for that. And the NT1 currently goes for around $269. And I mean, that's quite a bit more money, but I really do love the NT1. And if you are willing to invest that type of money, I do think it's worth it. To sum it all up, I don't think the SE X1A is a bad microphone. I think that some people might prefer it. I don't think that it's a terrible build quality for the price. The grill isn't the best on it, but it's not terrible. And the bottom line is I think I just prefer a couple other microphones in a similar price category. And with that all being said, the grade that I give the SE X1A, the Sex 1A, is a B minus. If you like the sound of this microphone, go for it. It's not a bad microphone. But thank you all for watching this review of the SE X1A. I hope it helped you out, helped you decide whether you want to get one of these or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews, some more live streams, some Q&As, and also some tutorials. I do just want to say a really big thank you to everyone that's a member of the Audio Hotline channel. I really do appreciate it, and it really does help me keep creating these videos. And if you'd like to support the Audio Hotline and become a member, there's a join button down below below. And another big thank you to everyone that subscribes to the Audio Hotline. You guys are great. I appreciate every single one of you that takes time out of your day to watch one of these videos. But this has been the Audio Hotline. I'm Bronson, and I'll see you audio nerds next time.